So should be live now. Cool. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Coffee and Bullshit. It's probably like episode number 17. Our special guest today is Greg Spathis. Hi everybody. From SWATS Training and SWATS Gun Shop. Right, Mantino, Illinois. Mantino, Illinois. So what's the training that you do? Uh, we're doing all the training uh, for the Illinois Concealed Carry, uh, the 16 hour uh, initial course. And of course we're doing the three hour renewal course which helps people get their concealed carry in the state of Illinois, and we are busy. We're getting a lot of a lot of classes are filling up. So I imagine. How, 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 how far back are you booked now? Like if I want to get, how soon could I get into a class? If I to we have our next, the next one that we have open will be in December. Uh, and, and that's because of the short month and yeah. You know, we got holidays. holidays and all kinds of stuff, yeah. So and the 16 hours makes it a little cumbersome to schedule classes too. So How do you, do you normally run two weekends? you run two days? How do you we run, run two days. days. Uh, we run Saturday, Sunday, uh, but we also do a special thing uh, that not a, lot of, not a lot of people do is if we have a family or you have a large group of friends that want to do it all together, we'll set up a special class. So we've done four nights, we've done two days and two nights, and we've done different things. So try to, awesome. we just have to get the 16 hours put in. So, right. Yeah. Except if your prior service, all you need is the eight, right? Yeah. If, then actually, if you have the prior service, you, that's right, all you need is the eight. We do recommend, and we don't charge anymore for it, we do recommend the vets come in for the full thing. Because oh. you know, a lot of the vets, uh, especially the Vietnam era guys, the last thing they shot was a 1911 basic training. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, they've, and they've never shot, they've never really fired a handgun since, and they have to qualify for the state. So we try to get them in just to get them all the handgun stuff up to date. And we still only charge them for the one day for the vet, for the vet price. So That's funny. My, you know, my dad came back. My dad used to hunt all the time, used to go trap shooting all the time and then he came back in Vietnam. I don't think he picked up a gun for 20 years, 25 yeah. years. Yeah, we see that a lot. We see not so, not so much with the, the guys that have, you know, been over in Iraq and, and that. Uh, you know, those guys are shooters and they've had handgun experience. But the older guys, you know, my age, my group, you know, that was in the Vietnam age, uh, they're, uh, they didn't practice with those guns. In fact, they weren't even issued those guns if, when they were in the field unless they had rank. Right. So, or flew you know, a helicopter or something. So. Even, but even when we, we moved out to Geneva area about 40 years ago, 40 some years ago, there was maybe one gun range in the whole area. Yeah. It was small and had, I don't think, very few blades at the time. So, well, there wasn't a whole bunch of places to go shooting. Ammo and guns weren't readily accessible as they are now. Right. So, well, when we were younger, like, we used to go shooting out in the country, you know, <laughs> without any problems. Without right. any problems, right? Yeah. You used to go out there, yeah. find a farmland, you know. Yep. A quarry that used to be out west of here used to go out and shoot there, and nobody cared, and because there was nothing out there, it was yeah, just it's, desolate. It's hard to find good places, even yeah. even with the the, the uh, advent of the new places uh, that have come on in the last ten years. The, those have even slowed down because of the cost. Uh, just the EPA requirements alone are running into the millions of dollars for air exchanges and air conditioning and heat and things like that. Really, really makes the cost of putting a range up prohibitive when you start doing the dollars. Right. You know, you guys run a business. You know, you got so many dollars to play with. You know, and those ranges, uh, it's hard to get that many people through the doors. That's tough. You know? I got to tell you, the new modern range is much nicer than what it was when we go shooting the first shooting. Even, oh, even yeah. 15 years ago, yeah. it used to be dark, dingy. You come out there, you blow your nose, it'd be full <laughs> of black. Yeah. yeah. Now, now we come out of a new range. Now. And there's barely anything like there's you don't get all the gunpowder you don't get as much as you used to like it used to be yeah the range the range we use for our uh, concealed carry class all our classes actually that we do the indoor shooting as wonderful yeah. uh, the only problem is again with like the heat exchangers and things like that some days in the summertime it's a little warm yeah because the EPA it's, requires them to do those air exchangers uh, and it sucks out a lot of the air conditioning uh, but you know it's a great place I mean it's got all the electronic stuff and, and it's, it's a great place to shoot and the people are comfortable there that makes a big difference. So. Yeah, it's one of the reasons it was a great time to learn how to shoot when you're sweating and dying. Like, yeah. Like, this would be great to learn how to summer combat when you're trying to look through the scope and the sweat's just dripping into oh, your yeah. eye and you're like, <laughs> you're bringing wet and it's uncomfortable. It's like, this is this is how you want to train. You can't train in air-conditioned, nice range all the time because otherwise, that's not how we're always going to shoot, right? No, and we're working with a local farmer now that's to set up some mounds and stuff like that. So we have we have the ability to start doing some outdoor shooting. We're going to be doing more rifle and shotgun. I would prefer, like out, you know, yeah. during the nice weather, outdoor yeah. stuff, you know. Some, some a lot of guys, when they, when they first started the CCW, the ranges weren't available or letting people shoot. Guys were shooting outside yeah. in January and February, and, and I can't imagine how brutal that would be, you know, to be out there in that cold trying to qualify, you know, so. Yeah, I've sat out in the winter in the snow waiting for uh, 
like hunting. Yeah. Sitting there for hours, get nothing, get nothing, but sitting out there freezing for hours. Like this, this is miserable. We're having fun, aren't we? Yeah, this is a lot of fun to be <laughs> super quiet and just sit here for well, and do nothing. That's the same thing when you're sitting out and guarding. Of you know, you're out in the field and you're in the cold and you're just sitting there doing two hour shifts. You're like, it is freaking cold yeah. here. I'm wearing my Mickey Mouse boots. <laughs> I'm yeah. Got all my snowball gear on. How much longer? Yeah. <laughs> time almost up then you want to hit the rack and yeah catch some sleep before your next duty oh, comes God. up again in four hours can't imagine that yeah like i've been saved from that so, so how go ahead oh no so how did you get into the business I, you know i was in government actually <laughs> which is i spent 20 years in government i spent uh, the first 20 years of my career i was in the real estate mortgage business uh i was on the secondary market buying and selling i wasn't dealing with the individual so much but uh then I, uh, the, the, the boom didn't last in that. I had 22 years and got an opportunity to go work for local government, which I took, uh, which actually turned out to be pretty nice because uh, I was able to uh, get another 20 years in and get a nice pension and be able to retire to do this. And when I retired, I, I, about four years before I retired, I opened up the shop, uh, told my wife uh, I was going to get my uh, FFL license, I was going to do it out of the house, and when... People started coming to the house at 9 o'clock at night. She's like, you need to find a place. So I was very fortunate to find a place where I are small. We're not a very big place. Uh, but uh, we've got, uh, I've got the greatest landlord in the world. I, I can't find a better deal, and I don't want to find a better deal. And we're going to stay so, We're going to stay small. So, you know. Uh, yeah, at least you knew everybody that came to the house had no felony convictions. Right. Right? You knew that ahead of time. Not really. Not really. Some, people were, some people were knocking on the door and they're like, is this the gun shop? And we're like, no, no, it's not the gun shop. So, um, it's amazing how people, you know, because we had set up this nice website and, and it was provided for us and we put our inventory on it. and It looks very professional, so people just assume you're like mega sports out here, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you got this big store. And they pull up in front of your house and they're like, is this the gun shop? <laughs> so, no. So we found a nice space, and uh, we've been there. Now it's been seven years, so wow. it's been uh, it's been good, uh, good times and bad times, like anything else, right. you know. But uh, we've hung in there, and uh, we've we've uh, made it through the state of Illinois, different things, and and the gun control, different things, and the sales up and down, and different presidents, and all this other stuff. So hopefully we make another seven. We'll see what happens. But uh, the training, we added that about a year and a half ago, and uh, that's that's been real good for us. So. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to diversify. Um, yeah, we were hiring trainers, and, you know, the tough part was uh, there was no consistency. A guy would say he'd have, a, he'd have a class in October, and he'd call me October 1st and say, oh, I got a wedding, I can't do a class. So we had people signed up, we'd have to move them, you know. So the, one of the guys that uh, spends a lot of time at the shop said, you know, I'd like to be a trainer. And I said, yeah, me too, let me find out how to do that. So we did some searching and everything, and we found uh, USCCA, uh, does the training for to be to co become a trainer, and we got involved with that, and we took the class, and then we uh, I opened up the training academy. Now we have consistency. Now we've got a calendar. Now we've got you know, we know we're going to have this class on this date, and we're going to be there whether we have one student or you know 15 or 20 or whatever. We know we're going to be there that day. So that that helps That's a nice. lot. Yeah. You, you know, just the consistency. Mm -hmm. So what was so as you're doing training. What do you think is the biggest mistake or the biggest things you see in the training of getting people to, through that class or the biggest hurdles to overcome? The biggest hurdle is the, is the perception of what concealed carry really means. Uh, and we, we hammer that, you know, pretty hard at the beginning, you know. Uh, we want people to understand that, you know, there's rules to carrying a gun. Sure. And you're not carrying a gun to become a junior cop. Uh, you're not carrying a gun to become Superman, Flip, put your cape on and go save the world. You know, you're, you're carrying a gun to protect you and your family and, and you and your family uh, from, you know, serious bodily harm or death. Uh, it's not just to protect your stuff, you know, and that, that's the other thing to get over, too, mm -hmm. is people want to go charging downstairs in their home with their shotgun and start blowing people away. You can't, you know, you really can't do that. I mean, I'm not just saying that if there's a danger there, you shouldn't or won't, but you got to stop and think. So a lot of what we teach is avoidance and how to avoid trouble. And if you can't avoid trouble, then how to handle it. So, and it kind of follows that progression. That's the hardest thing to get across to people. We've had, we've had people come in and uh, we have a guy we love to call Killer Carl. And we, we ask everybody at the beginning why you want to take this class. 
And he said, you know, because if I find somebody in my living room at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to shoot him until he quits wiggling. You know, and that's just a perception, and I hear that on TV. And the, the, the real rule is you shoot until the threat is stopped. So if the guy's laying on the ground, he's bleeding, he needs help, and the gun is no longer a factor, you don't walk up to him and, you know, blow him away. So you got you got to, then at that point, you got to call 911 and get help for him and you. So, so. That's, that's funny that I was talking, about, I was talking to a police officer about it, and they said, They've never shown up to a scene where a gun was fired, and the magazine still had uh, rounds in it. Yeah. He's like, he's like, they go, so you're so under stress, you're under, he's like, you you pull the trigger, it's to you, you'll think you shot two bullets, that's all you'll hear, and the magazine will be empty, you'll be pulling the trigger long after the magazine. Your, your auditory goes completely away from you, your, your tunnel visual, your tunnel vision kicks in, your adrenaline's going through your roof. Yeah, it's, uh, um. We, we do a little exercise in class. We uh, One of the instructors leaves class unknowingly. We give one of the students a CERT gun, with us, the red laser mm -hmm. gun. And we say, at some point in time, you're going to be surprised. You stop the threat. You fire until you stop the threat. And they come busting through the door with a fake knife in their hand, and he starts firing. And we ask the whole class, how many shots were fired? Everybody write it down. How many shots were fired? <laughs> Three, five, nine. Most cases, 17, 18. <laughs> now, I'll stand back because I'm not surprised by this, and I'll stand back and, we'll, you know, a couple of us will do the count to make sure. And you can hear the click of the of the trigger, yeah. you know. And uh, so we'll do the count, and they're like, no way. And I'm like, yeah, that's how many it really was. And, and people don't realize. Um, the, the, the situation in Chicago where the cop fired at the guy, he reloaded and fired again. I mean, he emptied two magazines. He didn't even realize it. He was, he was, they had to tell him he was out of bullets. Right. So, I mean, and, and probably just, as a police officer, you're, you're so, you're so trained into for the reload that it happens automatically. Automatic, right? yeah. You don't even think about it. Everybody thinks, oh, if you stopped to reload, you don't, he didn't stop to reload. He just reloaded. He reloaded because the threat hadn't stopped. The threat was still upright and coming his way or whatever, whatever the case was, uh, he perceived and uh, he kept firing. And that's, You'll find that as well. If you go to the range and you get yourself under any stress situation, you will completely unload. You know, uh, and that's they find that time after time after time. Yeah. That, that no matter how much practice you do, you'll till the threat stopped. I mean, you're going to keep going. And and you, the guys that were in the service, the yeah. guys that were in Iraq and stuff like that. I mean, they're going through thirty round magazines and they're still pulling triggers. Well, it's, oh, yeah. it's, as dumb as it is, without a threat, when we were shooting trap. I had my semi-auto shotgun, mm -hmm. and we'll put six shells in there, you know, right? But I'm like, I'm only going to use two per, per clay, but all five five rounds would be gone before the thing hit the ground while I was missing. It's like, five, it would go so quick, yep. and I could have swore I shot two, and it was the gun was empty. I'm like, how did I go through five? It happened so quick. Like, you're just chasing that bird, and you're like, trying to get it, so you don't even think you're not even counting the shots. You lose track. Just go to the range on a Saturday and, and start shooting, and you swear to yourself, I'm going to shoot slow and I'm going to aim, <laughs> and you miss your first two, and all of a sudden you're like, bam, bam, yep. bam, 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 you know, because you, now, now you want to put it on target, mm -hmm. you're frustrated. Yes. Uh, the adrenaline starts pumping. So. That's, yeah. that's really easy to do with the reactive targets. Yeah, very much so. As soon as you start seeing the reaction, as soon as you miss, you're like, you're yep. so quick to the next one, like, you're right. Yeah, i got oh. I got to stop the threat. I mean, that's, you know, and, uh, and it's a lot different at a range than it is at home and a guy standing in your living yeah. room moving. Right, there's no threat you know, at the range, right? You know, the paper, the paper, paper doesn't shoot back. The no, paper doesn't shoot back. Although I did catch a, I did catch some shrapnel <laughs> one time at a range. Yeah. Uh, came back at me and got me. And the, but the other than that, I mean, wow. you know, they don't shoot back normally. So. I got, I got a 357 casing down my, down my shirt. That's a dance. The guy, it? yeah, the guy, the guy <laughs> sitting next to me, right at the top of the, you know, the top of the divider has just big enough to the casing has to turn sideways perfectly to get through that. And the person next to me shooting, and I'm sitting there shooting, and I saw it out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, oh, I didn't go. And all of a sudden, just hot, hot, hot. And it was winter because I had like a t-shirt on underneath, tucked in, got inside that. And I'm like, yep, yep you're right. He's doing the dance. Like, man, is that hot when it comes to oh, that? Oh, yeah. You get a new tattoo you weren't planning on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, we, we show a video during our classes to the because the next day when we do range day, we try to tell everybody, especially when it's hot out, you, out, you have to dress appropriately. So no sandals. Mm -hmm. You know, the ladies, no tank tops and things like that. We have a young lady shooting a Glock. Uh, with uh, real short shorts on, sandals, and, and a tank and a t uh, strap, little string bikini top, and it goes right down her <laughs> and she is doing the dance. And she really is. So that kind of puts the word home to the ladies that no, I'm not going to wear that. Mm -hmm. so. That's funny. Other than that, yeah. you guys spend any time in a gun shop? No, 
to work too much. Yeah, yeah I know, it's tough. We used to. We saw our coffee got chopped, so that's about, I stop in to drop off coffee, then turn around, I say, man, I'd really like to come back here and shoot some time, and then leave. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. This, this just takes all our time. I mean, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, we wanted to be gun barrel coffee so we could support ourselves, so we could shoot guns and have fun. We're like, if we're guns, we could do, <laughs> well, you know, so this will be our budget for guns, shooting, we'll do like shooting all the time, yep. and just pretty much put, <laughs> gave that up, gave it up to start a business. Yeah, one of the things I'm kind of playing around with is a mobile range idea. Uh, We're talking about that. Yeah. That's, that yeah. sounds amazing. It is. It's actually very amazing. It's, it's very also very costly, so I'd uh, have to see if I can even put that together. There is one I know of that somewhere, somebody up north, I'm not sure if somebody in Wisconsin or northern Illinois has one, but it's an 18-wheeler. Mm -hmm. That's what this yeah. is. Yeah. It's 55-foot, and then uh, you have to have a tractor trailer, of course, to pull it. Yeah. But the nice thing is I got an area behind my shop where I can just set it up during a week and I can go in there and I can do classes and I can, you know, or we can, you know, rent lanes to shoot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all the stuff is already in it. It's already built, EPA approved, and, and it's all done. Plus it does the virtual training, That's awesome. uh, which you don't have to go in there and file real guns. You can do that with the, you know, the airsoft guns. How do you bulletproof a semi-trailer? They do it. They do it, yeah. Yeah, they with do the it. Wall. Like, I just feel like the walls are so thin, so how much, by the time you get done, like, putting, how many, how many feet of protection do you have to have on the whole thing? So with the new Kevlar, they put they put a line of Kevlar up first of all, so that kind of stops most of it, and then they put the foam padding on there that's also got some Kevlar base to it, so that absorbs a lot of it. And then you got to just limit the calibers that you're shooting in there. So you're not going to shoot an AR in there. You're not going to shoot 308s and things like you know long rifles and stuff like that. It's going to be all handguns. You know, it's the problem is you have to every inch because I've gone to the range and see enough holes in the ceiling. Yeah. That I don't I still don't understand like how are we shooting the ceiling? So they're shooting the ceiling. I know they're shooting the floor too. Right, I'm like. Well, hopefully not, but yeah, probably. I'm, I know they are. If they're, yeah. shoot, if they're shooting the ceiling, they're definitely. If you're shooting the ceiling, that's eight, it's eight foot ceiling. If you somehow can put a bullet up there, then you're definitely yeah. shooting the floor too. Yeah, yeah. Well, when they're shooting the floor, they're trying to skip the bullet to hit the target. Yeah, I mean they're. they're, they're why they just yeah. don't curve it around stuff? That's how yeah, I curve. I curve it around. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the matrix one. Yeah, one. <laughs> I, just, I curve around that and hit the target. That's why I was hanging two targets. Any Oakley style, you know, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but uh, so that, that's something that we're looking at, and we'll see if we can. Hopefully, we'll look at it this year and see if we can't get that accomplished and everything. It's just a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of things that we have to put together. And then the numbers got to work, too, on top of it. So Yeah, you would probably have to do some. You could, well, the good thing is you can do a lot of charity stuff. And you can do a lot of charity stuff, and we can pull that baby right up, like, to the, to the gun show yeah, and, and let guys test the guns that they're buying. And also, it would be actually go test the gun before you buy it. Yeah. Just go walk out there. So we'd can. have some of that, and then we could have some virtual classes out there and do some virtual. Because the virtual things come with all kinds of scenarios yeah. on them. So, you know, people have fun with that kind of stuff, too. So... And uh, we would push the kids. We do a lot of the, fir the first class we did out at the show. We did the uh, family class with the kids, and uh, that that always goes real well. The kids love that kind of stuff. So no shooting, but we let them handle firearms if their parents let them do it, and we give them the plastic ones, you know, that mm -hmm. we use mm -hmm. for training. And then at the end of the show, if they want to come up and touch the real ones again with the parents' permission. They, all of a sudden, it starts coming home to them that there. Wow, there's a huge difference here. I'm picking up the replica gun and it's this and I'm picking up the new gun and it's this you know and it's real hard so well, like anything I mean, most most parents with guns or you know if you teach them right from an early age not to you know respect it not to touch it yep. to tell you know if you see a gun laying there tell you know mommy daddy or an adult yep then don't touch it you know it could be loaded treat it as it's always loaded you know I do that with my kids yep and we hammer that home you know and, and but you're the rarity mm -hmm. a lot of parents don't know where to even start to teach you know, I mean, it sounds so simple, right? Don't right. touch it, right? But, you know, you know yourself, you 10-year-old boy, you tell him not to touch it, the minute you're out of the room, he's like, I'm going to touch that. That's what that's my grandfather's rule was, here it is, yeah. this is what it is, and teach you about it. So, and my grandfather was, I don't want you to be afraid of this. Right. That was his, you're not, you can't be afraid, it's because you're afraid, then that's when you use wrong, that's when you hurt yourself. And if it's always a no, 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 right, that's what makes you want to touch it more and play with it more. Yeah, the kids are amazing. I mean, oh, you, you I'll, let, I'll, let them, I'll let them touch it. Yeah. I'll let them touch it. Like, here, touch it, you know, but just know not to pull this. This could really hurt somebody, you know. Yep. Always treat it as it's loaded. You're right. Give them the four rules. They're yeah. never point at anything you don't intend to destroy. Yeah. Uh, we were, the, kid, the kids are amazing in the class. We had a young girl, about 10, sitting in the front row, and she was answering all the questions. Her hand was up on all, <laughs> all the questions. So you knew that she had gotten some stuff at home. And... Uh, we were at the end of the class. We were going, okay. Give us, somebody give us one of the four rules, and we're going around. We're getting one of the four rules, and 
nobody had said about keeping your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. And uh, my partner was doing the training that day, and he says, uh, I need the last roll. Come on, everybody knows what it is. And she raises her. Of course, she raises her hand. And uh, he says, go ahead. And she goes, keep your booger hook off the bang switch. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously somebody had thought her that. So I, when I did, a, I did a training class for new teachers, and uh, they were all ex-military. And they were struggling with the rules, and, and I said, keep the booger hook off the bang switch. Well, now they're all using it. They, they just love it. So she, she coined a, a term for us. Yeah. It's a great way to put it. It's you a always great, remember. Yep, you always remember. So Now, did you notice teacher, more teachers in the last couple of years? It's picking up. Picking up? Yeah, it's picking up. There's more interest in it. Uh, and you know what? It, it, it's, it's become a business. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the entrepreneur that wants to start their own and spend a little time and a little money on themselves because it does, you know you got to take the training and the training does cost money mm -hmm. uh, but you take the time you get the training we have found it's paid us back 20 fold you know from what we invested in sure. uh, and not to mention the fact that it's also helped the shop by osmosis because they have to come to the shop to train and most of the people that are, are doing this don't even have guns yet so it's a perfect opportunity for us to sell more firearms and not to mention the fact that if they want to put something in their hand, it's right there. You know, we don't have to say go to Mega or go to, you know, yeah. Bass well, Pro or whatever, you know. I think especially for a lot of women, it's very intimidating. It's, uh, yes. When they don't know anything about guns, to go in and start learning, they don't know what questions to ask or who to talk to. And then you go, like, so we, we did a, we worked with the well-armed women at, yeah, and they're like, yeah, it's, it's very intimidating for us to go into a store and start talking to some yeah. Because most gun stores to be some old cranky guy sitting behind the counter, you know, <laughs> treating them like no, right, we're not treat them like they were idiots because they didn't know questions after dinner. I think, my, we're like, well, let me let me help you, let me help you get over the fear. So, the big thing was finding classes like yep. this. And that was a big thing for women is, is having a class where they could go in and not be intimidated to go in and learn concealed carry. I mean, it's funny as a guy, I don't think about it often, but I think about my wife now. She goes out in the world, like for women. I never. I don't often think about things like in a really bad situation or a really bad area, right? There has to be a really bad neighborhood before, as a man, you're afraid of walking down the street. Correct. For women, it's everywhere, even where we don't perceive threats. For them, it's scary to walk down the street. So that's like why we're a grocery world. store here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they are, without a doubt, they are they're subject to, to violence. They right. really are. We could just because of size or the fact that they're female or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have a women's class. Uh, USCCA has put together a women's class. It's two day. It's actually it's a three day class. Uh, and it's written by one of the USCCA top trainers who's a woman uh, for women. And we deliver the class just as she intends it because I don't, I'm don't. i not going to sit there and pretend that I know what women are thinking as far as their own safety. The good thing about this class is we don't allow any other men in there but the trainers, okay? So they can't bring it. We've had a couple of husbands say, can I come too? No. Let them come and get this training. And we start them off on day one, literally, this is a gun go through the, how the gun works, we go through how you know revolvers work. We don't mess around too much with shotguns and ARs because that's not, the, women don't look for that as much. Right. But we do go through all the handguns and then at the end of the day we go shoot and we take all our 22s with us, so we take 22 pistols with us, including cowboy 22 pistols, and we, we teach, we take them through just how to shoot a 22. We put one round in, aim it, get their grip right, get their stance right, fire it, and how'd that feel? What do you think? Do you want to do another one? You know, because we don't want them to feel in any way from us that they're intimidated to do this. Right. You know, because if they're intimidated, they're done. Now we had a we had a lady uh, uh, lost her husband uh, six weeks before the class. Never had fired a gun. Lives out in the country. People are showing up in her driveway day and night. She's afraid. Mm -hmm. So she decided I need to do something. So she took the class. Literally cried from the shop to the gun to the gun range that she was just deathly afraid to shoot this gun. So we, we took her real slow with her and we put the one bullet in, let her fire it, we put two in, let her fire it. She says, I think I'm okay. She got through the course, the first course that we had her do of shooting and we said, now just go step back, take a deep breath, relax, watch the other people shoot. Uh, and then it came time for her again. I turned around and I said, you know, gave her the look like you ready to go? She's like, oh yeah. She comes up there, puts her target up. She starts banging away. Now, Full rounds, and full loaded magazine, does very well with it. I said, now you're ready to shoot one-handed. Oh, I don't know. I said, you're not always going to be at the range if something bad happens. 
Okay, you're going to have to shoot one-handed sure. maybe, or, or you may have to shoot left-handed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do both. And if you feel bad, you can stop. We always tell them that. The disclaimer is, you don't want to do it, we'll stop, you go sit and relax. You know, pushing them doesn't do any good. Mm -hmm. She comes up there right-handed, and she's all in the ten ring. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> she said, how do I do left-handed? So we switched her around, did left hand again, all in the ten ring. Well, now nice. she's excited. <laughs> now she's in, and she wants to know which gun she should buy and things like that. She took the full course, did very well, and no longer afraid of a firearm. And never had picked one up in her 70 years. She's lived on farms her whole life and never had to because <laughs> dad or uncle or husband or son or somebody right. always did it. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I know every so often I like to practice with left-handed shooting. Mm -hmm. Just in case my right hand becomes in op and I need to use my left. It's very important. And and it's you know what it's it, it takes it takes a lot of practice because you, your your sight picture now has just changed. Everything's changed. And you you know instead of using your right eye dominant, now you got to go to your left and try to get that on target. So what we recommend is we recommend the point method because you you have a natural point method. Mm -hmm. So you turn your body. And use a point method, so you'll point center mass. That'll get you center mass. You know, without having to try to find your eye. Right. You know what I'm saying? Try it sometime. I mean, yeah. it just it just kind of works. Put your get your off hand up here so you don't blow it off inadvertently. You know, and and point your body that way. And it does work. It works for the women. So you know, uh, and it works for me too, by the way. So <laughs> I got terrible vision, so it does work for me. Does it? Yeah. So. I'll have to try that. Yeah. Have to say, I've got any tips? Since like over the last two years, my vision's gotten much worse. Yeah. And it's like, so I don't wear glasses normally because I only really it's that's my close vision. So now it's when I when I when I look through a gun sight, that's when it gets blurry. So if I don't have glasses on, I used to be able to see the target down the range. You know, at seventy five feet, I could see where I was hitting. Now I can't see that far. Now it's a big blur. You got to just get it. You know, you, you can see the center of the target. Um, uh, one of the guys that uh, we one of the properties that we used to shoot at, he's uh, ex special forces, and I was watching him teach a young lady how to shoot, and he's like, you don't have to do it. You Thrust it out. Thrust it out in front of you and start firing. Use your point method because that's what special forces, they don't have time to get set up, and, mm -hmm. you know. And she was lacing it, and I was like, wow, that really makes sense, you know. So same deal. I mean, with our eyesight situation, if we can we can visualize the target, get it straight out in front of you, and, and let it fly, you know. You can make adjustments afterwards. Now that you're practicing, of course, you can't do it right. if you're in a firefight, but, uh, yeah. you know. Well, in most firefights, too, it's kind of spray and pray. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean... And we teach you to get off center, you know, do some movement. You know where you're going, they don't, you know, so. That's the hard thing, I think. When he's ready to fire, you stand, you almost come to like a statue. Well, you're almost, yeah. Your statue, you're, yeah, you're almost you're frozen. Yeah, you the ground. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You, right. you have to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You gotta be a moving target. And that's why we... That's why we hammer the avoidance portion of that home. You know, avoidance is everything, you know. So if we can get you out of that situation with all your limbs and, and no holes in you and you're safely in your car and getting out of there or calling 911 and getting out of there, that's the ultimate goal. Uh, fortunately, so far, knock wood, uh, we haven't had any of our students have to draw their gun in anger, which is nice, almost 300 students, uh, but, uh, you know, it's going to come a day. So uh, we want them to be ready. So. Yeah, you you know you rather uh, what's the saying? Rather have it and not use it than not have it and, and need it. Need it. Yeah. You know it's the way I've always been told, trained. So. Yeah, and you guys got your concealed carries and. I went to the class. I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, want, I didn't want to. I got mine. I submitted my finger. I got my fingerprints. I didn't want to give them. I know I can do it without. I didn't want to give my fingerprints to the government. So I didn't, I didn't go, go through and complete it. I, I don't know how to break this to you, but they got them already. So. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they do. I've never been fingerprinted in my life. Really? Yeah, I've avoided my whole I life. I worked in government, so I've been fingerprinted so many yeah. times, it's I'm, not even fair. Oh, well, uh, yeah. I've been you join, Once you join, you have to get fingerprinted. Damn. But I've never been fingerprinted. I've never been... I've been. I mean, I've gone. I've gone for rides in a police car a number of times, but I've, I've never actually been booked. I went for rides. Well, that's good. In the back seat. Mm -hmm. That's good. But I never. I've never been arrested, so nobody in the world has my fingerprints. So. Uh, the government. And you know, you, for your CCW, you actually do not have to do them. Yeah, I know, but it was. But it. What at the time we did it, it was. You can either wait a year to get your CCW. That's what it's taking now, supposedly. Or if you submit your fingerprints, you'll chop like six months off that. Then they're not. No, it was it was I got my couple weeks, but yeah, it that's was it was like six months with it was massively backed up. It was like 
<laughs> well, right now they're they're telling you even on the phone right now that if you have fingerprints, it'll take you 115 days. Bullshit. Oh, it's or, or if you have fingerprints, if you don't have fingerprints, it's going to take you 190 days, which I believe for both, by the way. So, you know. Uh, I just didn't bother fishing. Then by the time I got around it, going back to make decision, it was already like it had already been too long. So, I have to go redo the class and go get it again. All right. Well, I just want to put this out real quick. Uh, one of our good customers, Josh, uh, he's a sheriff, brought me, brought us a bottle of uh, Buffalo Trace. So decided to do a shot here. Maybe we'll be using one of our coffees in the future. Thank you. Maybe we can infuse that. So yeah. So salute. 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 Cheers. salute. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Smooth. Smooth. Better with coffee. Yeah, yeah it would, would be good in coffee. Yeah, it would be good in coffee. Let's make some out of Sumatra and dump that in there. Mm, yeah, in the Sumatra. Good dry roast. Right. So now you've gotten gun, you've gotten ARs back in stock at the shop. We've got some back in stock, and I got more to build. So. Do you have any ammo? No. <laughs> if the ammo is like gold. They should, they should sell every. I got some now. nine in this week. It went fast. I mean, they gotta sell. They gotta sell guns now with no. like, like noisemakers on them. So it's like bang. Yeah. Bang bang. You'll just be hollering out. Bang bang. Yeah. <laughs> and have a rock in the other hand. A rocket throwing. Yeah. Well, how about regular guns, pistols? We're, we're getting more and more firearms in. Now, some of the popular ones are still in the backlog. We're hearing from the manufacturers that uh, um, hopefully the first of the year they'll get things starting to get caught up. Uh, don't forget that a lot of those guys were shut down for three months because of COVID. Right. So they're, they're really backlogged. Ammo's biggest problem is the primers. Yeah, right. We hear that all, all the time. Guys are always like, yep. at the gun shows, like, well, if I could get uh, if I could get small small caliber primers, small pistol primers, yeah, small pistol primers, like everybody has casings, but they don't have the primers. Yeah, we've got. I mean, that that's what we're hearing. Well, I think a lot of them get shipped from overseas, right? You know, there's three companies that make them, uh, and one of them is overseas, and there's two in the United States. But uh, again, it's just getting that ramped up. They they were already on back order when the COVID hit. But it wasn't such a big supply problem because a lot of guys weren't selling that much, so they were, you know, okay, we're backed up a little bit, but we're making them, you know right. what I'm saying? Then they blew through their inventories quickly, and then they had the, the fact that now they're not only backed up three months, they're backed up six months because they were already backed up, and they're starting to get stuff into production, but you can only make so many per day. And then there's so many companies out there making ammo now or trying to make ammo to catch up with the demand that the, the demand for primers is just huge. So there's, there's two companies here that make primers? Two companies. In this for country. all the ammunition in, the, in this country, there's only two companies? Mm -hmm. It seems like those would be two really huge companies. I, I guarantee you, at some point in time, now there will probably be more. Somebody looks into it and yeah. says, hey, we got to make primers. You think they'd be running three shifts, seven days a week? They, and they are. And they are. They probably are running. It's, it's not me, I mean, 24 7. But when you got your plant that's been there right. since 1902, yeah. and it's got so much floor space, and you got so many machines to make everything, and, and so many guys. That expansion is, okay, we're going to buy a new building and we're going to put in, you know, 500 machines and hire 500 people. Well, that'd take you a couple of years to get yeah. that all accomplished, too. So it's it's a big problem. And, and, the, and the industry, once again, didn't learn from the 22 caliber debacle from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. just they're, they're just behind. Uh, yeah. I think, I'm guessing they don't get government subsidies either. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's no. There's no bailout for the expanded ammo plant. And, and they're getting told by the government that if they got military contracts, those get taken care of first. Yeah, correct. So don't forget the military is grabbing all the stuff out of well, there. But the military doesn't use 22. So what are the military? Well, not 22, do. but they use they? like millimeters. They use training rounds. 22s. And don't yeah. forget uh, two, two, three, and right. nine mils. Nine. Nine mils. Well, they They'll use nines and they use 45s. Uh, Sidearms, right? Yep. Yeah, they'll use 308s for this, uh, uh, the, um, not the 60s anymore, uh, the Bravos. Right. Um, those are 308 calibers. Then all the 556 they use. They use a lot of 556, the yeah. green tip stuff, the Lake City ammo, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So those they have to meet those contracts, especially like the 9s and the handguns and stuff like that. I mean, that's... Shit, I wonder how, much, how, how many rounds of 9 do you think our government has stored? Oh, oh, 20 million, 80 million, 100 million, 700 million? Probably upwards of 100 million. How many Chinese are there? Yeah. 
Was yeah. that, is that what it's based on? Pretty Probably much. Pretty much. One billion? Pretty much. Three billion, you gotta take out a whole nation? Yeah. Uh, one for everybody in the country? When I was in, we told we'd run out of ammunition before we kill all the Chinese. So that's just what I was, you know. Um, <laughs> they like to tell you stuff like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well. But no, it's, it's mostly true. But again, what keeps... It's hard to get some people in certain political circles to believe this. What keeps us from being invaded is yeah. the Japanese were right in World War II. There's there's an American with a, a gun behind every blade of grass. Correct. And we don't want to invade their mainland. There's already been countries who said that. The part of the, they found like part of the Middle Eastern countries. They found like a their manifesto like how they're going to take down the United States. And one of, one of the things they found in a whole bunch of them was you cannot invade the United States because everybody's armed. So it's part of what protects the homeland, whether people want to believe it or not. And you don't know who's armed. Right. Right. I don't need an AR-15 to go hunting. I need an AR-15 to protect I mean, against foreign they're, governments they're, and our own yeah, government. There's a little lady with me today that you would never know she's armed. She's a grandma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't I wouldn't want to piss her off. <laughs> well, whatever the political climate comes out to be, who's going to right. be the next president. If it is uh, Biden, he'll probably be the number one salesman besides uh, Obama was. Um because, you know, people are just going to be buying up guns and ammo like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even if Trump has a chance still, who knows, with the whole election thing, even though they said that's president-elect, I'll go with that. You're not, not going to see any of us going rioting or looting or anything like no, that. We're not, um, we're not wired that way. No. We're, we're, we're wired to go to work on Monday morning. Yeah. Um, so. And uh, not be sad or grumpy about it. Um, I'm not thrilled with it. Oh, I'm not, but I no, mean, nobody really. No, I mean, I'm not thrilled with it. But uh, I got better things to do than go out and burn somebody's, you know, bush down or, or yeah. business down. Or, yeah, and uh, you know, it is what it is. And you know what? It's still not over. Nothing's been confirmed yet. So there's right. still going to be some um, a lot of legal battles. A lot of legal battles. Yeah. It's like the 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 Bush um, Gore of twenty of two thousand. Yep. Hanging so chads. See, hanging chads. Hanging chads. Yes, we'll call this <laughs> something else. Who knows what the name will come up to be. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I've, almost every single president's always had some sort of legal battle in every election, just to make sure everything's fair and right. I'm old enough to remember I was in college when Jimmy Carter got elected, and you want to talk some about some general depression. There was some general depression amongst all of us young guys in college because we really thought the Middle East was firing up then, and we really thought we were all going to be back in the draft. You know, if we didn't get drafted the first time, we thought we were going to be back in the draft and going to war. Never materialized. Four years he was gone, and because right. he was terrible, and yeah. you know, God only knows what'll happen here. We don't, we can't predict the future, but it's, it's four years. I mean, all the people that have been screaming and crying and wailing and cussing for the last four years that Trump is in. Well, now if he's not in, then they got their way. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it, just back and forth. Yeah, so. yeah it's, it's. The funny thing is, though, if you look from four years ago to now. Nobody's life changed drastically because who was president, mm -hmm. and your right. life won't change drastically again because of who's president this four years. Yeah, I've, we have we've all everybody here has lived through Democratic and Republican presidents. Yep, both sides of it. No one's no one's worse off this time because of who was president, right? Much as we don't like it, may they change some rules. And if you if you read the pre the history of most of these presidents since Washington, really, I think Washington is about, about the only one that had it somewhat right at the beginning. They've all been a crapper in some way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They've all had their own peccadillos where mm -hmm. they want things a certain way and could change the country. And, you know, it's just, we've made it through 200 and, what, 27 years or whatever it is, 247 right. years. So, I mean, come on. Um, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Yep. Leave my guns alone. Leave my 2A alone. That's all I want. You know, and, and right. leave my coffee alone. And <laughs> Right? As long as, long as I don't mess with the, the Second what? Amendment, everything else is great. You know, the, the Second Amendment, when Illinois did their CCW, their, their concealed carry, the word was, oh my God, it's going to be terror in the streets, right. gunfights, okay corral, and none of that's materialized, and that's no. like anything else. I mean, well, and the, and the people that have legally used their CCW to protect, nobody's gone to jail. Well, it's funny, because like they always talk about that, right? So like, like I said, the one thing that kind of always amazed me about Sturgis is we saw very few guns, and it's open carry there. It's constitutional carry right. there. So according to the whole sides against guns, if you allow, if you ever had that, it would be, you know, Wild West showdowns in the middle of the street, it would be chaos, there would be guns everywhere. I, I I think I saw three guns the whole time sure. in 11 days. Sure. Walking to Walmart, walking to stores out in public, never saw them. You can yeah. strap a rifle on your back and walk yeah. around with it there. But, but like anything else, I've never been a big proponent of open carry, because I never want anybody to see what I'm carrying. That's because you're from here. True. 
that's because you're from here. When, when you go out west, I spend some time in Arizona. We have family out in Arizona, and my brother-in-law is always kind enough to, to loan me a gun when I'm out there. And I, I open carry. And nobody ever pays attention, to be honest with you, because right. everybody's open carry. There's a lot of people open carrying out there. Uh, but when I come back here, I wouldn't, well, not just because of law. Here, I wouldn't even dare because that's inviting a firefight. Right. So I agree with you 100% here. Right. You know. right. But when it's open carry and everybody's open carrying, then what does it matter if somebody knows what you're carrying? I think that's that's more of a deterrent to any bad people because they know that there's a good chance everybody in here has a weapon. Yeah, if it's somebody wants to sneak up words. behind you, I don't know. I just yeah, but if everybody has a gun, they're yeah. not gonna sneak up behind you. To try to you know, and again, you got to be aware when you're carrying a gun. You're, right. you're you're the you're in charge of that firearm, and you have to be aware. Right. You know? I mean, that's just like to tell you in the military, this is your gun. Don't lose it. That's your responsibility. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and the same thing with your sidearm. Um, I think I think concealed carry in Illinois makes a lot of sense. I think in the Midwest it makes a lot of sense. We wear coats all the time anyway, so and, you know yeah. we're, we're wearing coats eight months out of the year, so you know it's not a big deal. Arizona, you go out there if you're going to open carry, you buy pretty, right? <laughs> you, you buy the you don't buy the you don't buy the pro handle, yeah, chrome. I mean, you know, you buy all the pretty stuff. So uh, it's just it's part of your wardrobe. It's part of your ensemble, right. you know. So, so out, of, out of pistols or revolvers, what do you prefer? Pistol. Pistol? Pistol. Pistol for the women, too. I mean, the pistol for the women, too. Um, there's the new uh, shield. Uh, Smith & Wesson EZ has come out. Women can rack that slide. Uh, we teach them the proper way to do it. Uh, they're more comfortable with it. And um, the only bad part about a revolver is that long first pull. Right. And that really gets some women just totally discombobulated and going forward. Their fire yet? Right. Well, oh, yeah. And then they're... they're What's wrong with they're, it? They're, Yanking, you know. You don't, you don't look at the gun. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> and that's why I'll be honest with you. That's why we do such small class sizes because we want to make sure that we have enough range officers, and we only do one woman or man, even in qualifications, a piece during during the qualification because I want to be right here on you in case you're going to not understand what you're doing or or just mental errors. Right. And I can grab that gun. I can put it down on the counter. I can keep you you and me safe. You know. Uh, and other people, and that's why we do that. I've seen a lot of, and everybody has different styles. I've seen a lot of people stand back and do five at a time. You got five new shooters out there. To me, that's taking a risk I don't want to take. And that's right. just just personal thing. So oh, I, I see veteran shooters all the time at the range, blowing right through the first four the four rules oh, all the time. All the time. I, I watched a guy shooting a three fifty seven revolver at the range. <clears throat> he would bend down to grab another target with his gun loaded and would scan the whole range. No, the whole range, and I. And someone needs to say something. Right. Where's the range safety officer? Right. You know, not one. So, so one thing I one rule I learned that I thought was pretty brilliant is everybody on the range is a range safety officer. Yes. Anybody has the right at any time to call ceasefire, stop if that kind of bad situation is going on. So it's intimidating to do it sometimes, but it's necessary, especially when the guy's pointing a gun at, gun at you twice. And like, you know, did you know it was loaded? Right. And, and, and one one bending down to grab target with the gun in his hand, right, uh -huh. pointing at me twice. I'm like the first time, I'm like. That's not good. And the second time, I was like, all right, that's it. I, I'm not going to sit back here because that, that's a large caliber bullet to go you know, ricocheting around the, a range with a whole bunch of people. We have the, we have the video that we show the class. Of the two guys in, I think it was Philadelphia, a guy and his buddy. And, and he was showing the guy. They were doing a, a, a video, you know, holding the, the, the mm -hmm. stick up, the selfie stick. And he wanted to take a picture, and he puts the gun up to the guy's head to take oh, a selfie. I saw that. I saw oh. that video. And the race, yeah. thank God the RSO was right there. And he grabs the guy. Throws him across the table, grabs the gun. Now the girl on the news said, that for, fortunately, the gun was not loaded. When you, if you watch the whole video of that, the range safety officer ejects a shell and empties the gun. So that gun was loaded, and and just and he had his finger on the trigger and the whole thing while he's trying to do a. a, a so they've been banned for life from that particular range. And uh, but uh, well, and I stupid mean, stuff happens. Your you know? number one safety is this finger. Yep. This is, this is your, you carry it with you all the time. Yeah. yeah. Yep. This is your safety. Crazy, just leave that finger off. Yeah. Keep your booger hook off the bench. <laughs> I love it. Booger hook off that the bench. Right? I'm going to do a t shirt with that. That's a great t shirt. Yeah, I'm going to do a t shirt with that. That's a great t shirt. Booger hook off the banks. I don't know if I have to pay her a royalty, but it was, it was awesome. So. So. Well, we got about uh, five minutes left. So tell us again. So if they want to sign up for a class, where do they go? Uh, so they can contact us at the, at the shop, uh, uh, SWATS Training Academy, or uh, SWATS Gun Shop, LLC. That's down in Mantino, Illinois. Uh, we're on Prairie Drive in Mantino, Illinois. 
and they can call 815-887-0069 or they can go online at swatstraining.com and register for classes there. SWATS is S-W-A-A-T-S? Yeah, yeah we're weird. S-W-A-A-T-S. Uh, the original name of the company was Sword Weapons, Ammunition, and Tactical Supply. So there's your acronym. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. that's cool. And, uh, yeah, so, and, and we've shortened it since then and uh, brought Mama into the corporate structure. So um, so we made a SWATS, train, SWATS a gun shop LLC. So uh, did some tra changes there. But uh, yeah. Do you, guys, do you guys do other training beyond uh, concealed carry? So we do concealed carry. We do the women's class, which is awesome. We do beginner's uh, handgun. Uh, we are in the spring doing rifle and shotgun, right. uh, and we're also do we also do a family class. We do a mass shooter class, and we've got guys. A couple of, one of our trainers is a paramedic, and he's doing the uh, um, first aid. medical first aid class because yeah. that's going to be a big class to know, and that's good because of the turn. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that some of the stuff on TV where they they're running up the guy got shot by a rubber bullet and they're saying get a tourniquet get a tourniquet. Yes, like, I oh my God. God. <laughs> okay, no, because the guy will die. Okay, from the tourniquet, from not, the from tourniquet. The, not from the bullet, right, yes. not from the rubber bullet that just made a scrape. Uh, so we're we're going to get that class put together too. Yeah. And we found a lot of interest from other the people. We want to keep our students interested. Uh, we're also gathering in January. We're going to be gathering, we're inviting all our former women's students, and we're going to do a women's league in the spring with 22 rifles. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, nice. Real casual, have some prizes, let them divide up into teams, and then have like a picnic at the end of it, just to keep them active, right. you know, in shooting. Uh, oh. And I, I, I'm excited about that. I, that. That's something that I, I'm looking real forward to. And if that works out well for them, then we'll do the men next, because the men are more competitive, and you got to have more sophistication with some of that stuff. But not to say that the women aren't, but the, the women want to have fun with it, and, and we do too. We too. Even if you're familiar with guns, I think it's great to go take a class. Yeah. As funny as after shooting a long time, they won't take in the CCW class. There's so many other things I learned. One of the best we saw was a short video about clearing your weapon with a jam. Mm -hmm. And the video was so great because it was so right. It's like, all right, so here's what happens at the range. Gun jams. What happens? You get 15 gun experts all automatically <laughs> yep. come over, gather around, and yep. everybody knows the right technique, how to clear the weapon, and no one knows how to clear the goddamn weapon. Yep. He's like, he's like, here's a simple one, two, three, how to clear the weapon. I've used that every time. Yep. Slap, like, rack, and roll. Yep. It's been <laughs> the best, the best technique I've yep. ever used. But uh, like when he's like, yeah, 15 gun experts. I that happened. I've seen it at the range. It actually happened. Like, ah, oh, it's jammed. Like, it's immediately like 15 guys yep. who all know the right way to do it, and nobody can clear the damn weapon. It's like, it's the best technique ever, and it clears every weapon. And so it's so so effective and so quick. So what you can do when you do go to the range, and what we do with the, with a lot of our classes now is when we go and practice, we'll we'll load the magazines and we'll slip a snap cap in there. Oh, nice. So we guarantee. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's awesome. So and you'll and you'll you'll see them, <laughs> and and you see that momentary. Oh shit! What do I do? <laughs> you know. And then it's like slap. Oh yeah, slap rack and okay. Now they get it. So as we progress through the shooting, we do that a couple times to them, and then they know it at the end more, better, you know. That's, that's always that's always good training. Like yeah, that. yeah, it just makes sense, and it gives them real world. And we do it at the range and keep the gun pointed down safely. And mm -hmm. of course, we're right. I mean, literally right there. And we tell our students, look, we never are going to put our hands on you, but if we do, you know, you did something really bad. That's correct. So just you know, I mean, really, if you don't know the four rules, you shouldn't touch a gun. Right. Yeah. That's a simple thing. If you follow those four rules, you pretty much. Can't can't in very rare circumstances could cause a problem. But other than that, if you if you mind those four things, yeah. And and the other thing we do is we have a young man that was in a carjacking. Because a lot of the people that take our classes have never even sniffed having to use a gun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he was in Illinois involved in a carjacking. They were trying to take his car. Three guys, and the guy, and he, him and the guy exchanged shots. He got shot four times. He shot the guy three times. It's a hell of a story, and and there's never a dry eye in the house when this guy gets because he tells it from the heart so well. I mean, I got to walk out of the room a couple of times because it's like, holy Christ! I mean, this guy was that close, that close. You know what I'm saying? And it really slams at home, especially to the new students and the women students. That yeah, this is serious. You know, because yeah. you tend to when you get in these classes sometimes, and we we try to keep them not light, but but yeah, moving. Can, yeah. You know, where it's not can't be all know, serious. Right. Can't be all monotone. Right. And and. Then they, we, we hit them with this, and it's like, oh, my, that's the real reason why I'm in here. You know, and it just it just makes a lot of sense to do. And he's volunteered. God bless him. He's volunteered to do all of our class whenever we want him. That's awesome. To that's tell awesome. a story. Yeah, so he's going to he's gonna do our podcast. We're going to have him on there. Awesome. If, yeah. And, oh, uh, and tell people that, too, while we're out thinking of it. 
you're going to start your podcast, you think, maybe not this, not next week, but the week after? Hopefully, the next couple of weeks, yeah. So, so we'll let you know. We'll, we'll hit you guys up and let you know. We'll, and we'll share it, let you guys know on their podcast. So they're going to do some awesome videos, training videos, awesome informational yep. videos. Um, and we want you guys... Yeah, we'll you definitely know, go, down, we'll go down and be on their podcast. Yeah. We'll supply coffee so it makes it move along, makes it interesting. Yeah. What, what, what caliber do you fire? Nine. Nine? He shoots nine two. All right, I'll, I'll try to save some for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have enough five, five, six. I'm good on that, but nine. Nine's, well, nine's the major one. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's crazy. Major. It's just crazy. So it's everybody. It's, it's, well, it's, it's got enough power that it's actually like decent to shoot. Mm-hmm. It's not so much that it's like... I can only go for like a little bit and shoot a little bit. Like I like shooting my, my AR, but like the five five six, man. After about uh, twenty minutes, it's enough. I've had enough fun. I carry a six hour P three sixty five. I'm a six hour guy. I didn't have my hat on today. I wore my training hat, but um, I, I love six hour. That's just my gun. But I also have the Smith and Wesson easy. Yeah. Um, so I, that's what I bought for my wife for her carry. I'm, I'm more. I, you know what I've been carrying more is just the uh, Canic. How do you like it? I like it. I love it. it you know what? I was so surprised by it. I mm-hmm. got to be honest with you. I, 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 <clears throat> one of my vendors had a show in Kentucky, and I went down for it, and Canic was there, and that was the first time I'd ever had one in my hand because I, you see them in magazines yeah. sometimes, and you're like, eh, you're like I how don't cheap know. is this? I think they have the best triggers out of it. Oh my god, god they're awesome. Box. Yeah. Out of the box is the best trigger. I mean, I got always. guys, I got long-time SIG shooters, you know, Smith & Wesson shooters. I mean, guys that buy quality guns. Where'd you get this at? You know, when did this come around? It, it's, it's really well made. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really convinced is. Beretta owns the company. I'm convinced Beretta created their own I think competitor. They probably did. <laughs> I, think, I think it's their own competitor. I think CZ is, a, is Beretta also. Yeah. I think oh, Beretta yeah. took all their patents and then just like, here, let's make our own competitor yeah. so we own the market. Right? But I've been pleasantly surprised by the quality of that Canic. Yeah. So if you're, yeah. if you're looking for a good quality, reasonably priced gun you're trying to get into shooting, that's a gun to keep an eye on. You yeah, bought, you really bought what, nine forty five. We shot it. Was really good yeah. too. I mean, they're just no. I, at mall, mine are nine. Yeah, so I've, I've shot. The, I, I got shot got the one the nine, DS, and it's, it, uh, it's got, nice. Yeah, but everyone, 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 the whole everyone had a great, like, crisp trigger. There yeah. wasn't, there was no like mush to it at all. It was, man, it was just like. And I opened a kit yesterday. It was their, there was their compact one. It's three point yeah, three inches or that's right. the one. Like, yeah, and it had the holster in it, and it had the extra mag in it, and yeah. and it had just like a, a tool kit in it. Yeah. You know, so if you want to if you want to adjust your sights or whatever, I mean, mm-hmm. everything is right. In it. And I'm like, wow, that's really different. You yeah, know? for under four hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, really. So I mean, that's just you know, we're we're pleased with that. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that's. Yep, that's about it. We made it to the end. Well, thank you guys. Hey, I appreciate, appreciate it. Man. Thanks, Thanks for to Greg for joining in. us. SWAT's gun, uh, gun shop, right? What's, yep. the, what's the website for the for the gun shop? Uh, www.swats.com. So that SWATS is S W A A T S. A A T S. And then SWATS Training. SWATS Training.com for the uh, training site. Go sign up for a class. You want to know? Or just call me at 887-0069-815 area code. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Thank you guys all for joining us out there. We'll see you again in about a week. Don't forget to keep your head on a swivel and be safe. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That was awesome. All right. We're clear there. Clear. That was way different than I thought.